This next one is a very rare document to find in many organizations. In a lot of the firms I've trained, I asked the question, do you know what a project scope statement is? And they incorrectly tell me, yeah, we know what that is. You call it an SOW. No, it's not a statement of work. Oh, what is it? And that's when I tell them about Andy George. Who is Andy George? Just search on YouTube, Andy George Chicken Sandwich. <laughs> and if you get to his video because of me, say Phil sent me to you, he'll be pleasantly surprised to know his video is being used to underscore the importance of a project scope statement. In Andy's video, there's a concept of how to make anything, everything, including a chicken sandwich, from scratch. How do you make a chicken sandwich from scratch? Now, imagine a stakeholder saying, I want a chicken sandwich as my deliverable. That's the project, create me a chicken sandwich. And you go away and say, okay, we'll create you a chicken sandwich. Okay, so you want some mayo, you want some lettuce, you want uh, the chicken, okay, we'll make it. Then, just as you are about finishing this chicken sandwich, there's a walkthrough, there's an audit, and the customer comes by your site and is horrified to see what you're doing. You are using certain ingredients, condiments, that are certainly not what the customer wanted. What did the customer want? A chicken sandwich made from scratch. Instead, you went to the local store and bought all these condiments. Customer says, no, 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 no. I want the lettuce grown from scratch. I want the chicken farm raised fresh. Sorry, Peter. I want the bun for the chicken sandwich baked made from scratch. I want the ketchup made from scratch. And you, the performing organization, oh my gosh, <laughs> what have we done here? We have started a project without a project scope statement. What does the project scope statement do that other documents do not. Where do we even start from? First of all, the project scope statement outlines exclusions and inclusions. It also goes back to hash out those constraints and assumptions in the assumption log to identify if any is missing are missing. At the end of the day, it is an end-to-end -end discovery of what exactly needs to be done to deliver that deliverable. The chicken sandwich goes through a product analysis, and that is when you analyze from a 360-degree perspective everything that that deliverable is meant to have leaving no stone unturned. What should it look like? What should it feel like? What should it taste like? What are all of those other features and functions that should be in it? And how are we going to make this a reality? How are we going to make this chicken sandwich that the customer wants custom from scratch? It's then as you're creating this project scope statement that you begin to realize we're definitely going to need a trip to the Atlantic Ocean. That is to get salt water so that we can evaporate it to get salt. It all has to be from scratch. We need to grow a vegetable patch. We need to bring in a cow so we can milk the cow to get milk for the mayo. 
We also need to rent a boat. We also need to grow the lettuce. Long story short, Andy George realized it would cost $1,500 to make a chicken sandwich from scratch versus 10, five, maybe even less dollars to go into the local store, buy the condiments and throw it together. Because you need to cover all your bases and make sure you know the exclusions and inclusions, you need a project scope statement. You do. A lot of firms are wasting time and money by not accounting for the inclusions and exclusions and not doing a product analysis. So they discover too late what they created is and what was needed. Have you ever seen that comic strip? What the customer said they wanted, what they really wanted, huge disconnect. How the project manager understood it. You ever seen that comic strip? Google it. What the customer really wanted cartoon, comic, you should be able to see that. So all of that to say, this document, the project scope statement is invaluable. And if your company is involved in a lot of predictive project management, predictive life cycles, and they are not using this, it is unfortunate that they are not using it. 5.3 is where you can get all of this. But I want to show you on page 151, if you're taking the PMP exam or any of the PMI exams, let's read. It says, since all the requirements identified in the collect requirements process may not be identified in the project, may not be included in the project, the defined scope process, watch this, selects the final project requirements. Wow, did you know that? I'm dropping some gold for you and I want you to highlight it. Go read up that entire thing. It says, this process where we create this document selects the final project requirements from the requirements documentation. Now, if you watch the previous video, you see I talk about requirements traceability matrix versus requirements documentation. It's very clear. You can see for yourself that this will take the requirements documentation and filter it to get the final requirement set. It then goes further to say it then develops a detailed description of the project and product service or result. And that is what your project scope statement does. I wish I had more time to go into much more detail, but if you take a look at page 154 and 155, you can begin to see the differences and similarities between it. In other words, the project scope statement and things like the project charter or any other document you may be getting muddled up. This is invaluable. Let's read. Some of the things in the project scope statement are product scope description. It progressively elaborates the characteristic of the chicken sandwich, of the products, of the deliverable. It says deliverables. It outlines everything about the deliverables in great detail. In some instances, it could be a summary description. So bear in mind that this document, though the payoff would be great if you needed to go into a lot of detail, on some projects, high level is sufficient. So you gotta tailor your application of this. Then it says acceptance criteria. Bear in mind, acceptance criteria is different from approving authority, and that is also different from critical success factors or project success criteria. You've got to keep all these terms straight. And that's why you can see the project charter on page 155 
next to the project scope statement because sometimes people get these terminologies mixed up. And if you're taking the exam, the best I can say is read the detail. If you are looking to take the PMP exam and you're looking for training and coaching, you like live coaching, you like this delivery method where it's as though you are right with me, right here in the studio with me, you need to go to pmsuccee.com because right now we have 35 hours of live training exactly like this where you can ask questions and converse with your trainer and coach for the PMP exam. I encourage you to check out pmsuccee.com. And also, if you prefer studying self-study, but you enjoy this delivery, go to praiseon.com. Praiseon.com, as it's spelt over there, here, somewhere on the screen, make sure you sign up for the self-study training. I think you'll greatly enjoy it. Thank you, it's your friend Phil here. Just trying to help someone who needs a little bit of encouragement in their project management. See you in the next video.